morning you guys welcome back to the vlog happy Monday I am home and the last time you saw me I was tan I was thriving I was living my best life in New Zealand and if now you're wondering why does she seem so unwell it's because I am unwell <laughs> um, I have been sick for like the past week and let me tell you, this one really took me out. Um, so, rewind. We made it home on time. Thank goodness. We made our connecting flight with five minutes to spare. Um, we went to, we like sprinted across LAX, got to our check in place, and it was like, oh, sorry, you're too late to check your bags. So, we were like, seriously? because the only other flights that day were like connecting flights and we had a direct one. So we were like, God, seriously. So bless this lady at LAX. She like messaged the people at the gate and was like, let me see if we can make an exception and like get you guys in. So she messaged them. Thank the Lord. They like got us on. Our bags even made it home. Don't know how, but they did it. Thank you, Alaska. Um, and so we like ran to our gate and got there as they were making the five minute announcement. So made it home. Um, I should have recorded uh, the first weekend we were home because we actually did quite a bit. Um, I did a huge grocery haul because our fridge was completely empty when we left. And then we went to Top Golf with Cody's cousin and her fiance. And then the next day we went to a Kraken hockey game with Cody's stepdad, which was super fun. But I had been videoing so much on the trip and like cranking out vlogs that I just kind of wanted to uh, like take a break while once we got back. So anyways, last weekend was super fun. And then two days later, my throat started hurting. And it just went downhill from there. So I have some sort of virus, um, which I know because my stepmom has the same thing and went to the doctor and we both tested negative for COVID. She tested negative for strep, which I didn't test for, but I don't have any of the like visible symptoms of strep. Um, so it's just some virus that you just kind of have to deal with and let run its course, which has been awful. It's, I've had COVID. It's worse than COVID I think um it was like super bad body aches headache like my muscles were so tight I had the sore throat then I got the stuffy nose then the cough and like it's it just won't go away so I actually do feel a lot better today I just have like a scratchy voice still um and honestly the worst part is the pressure like, my ears are plugged, my head hurts so bad, and this really started, like, probably yesterday, but based on Google, um, I think it's just, like, a tension headache from the amount of pressure that is in my head, but it's, like, anytime I cough or if I, like, bend down to pick something up, move my head a certain way, it just, it feels like there's a band around my head that just squeezes with any form of pressure, and it hurts so I'm trying to stay hydrated take some Tylenol like um trying to I need to put some like heat on my shoulders to like loosen it up I don't know but anyways um that's where I've been the last you know two weeks and what a fun video for you to come back to I know but no so I'm that kind of person that once I'm when I'm sick, I just feel like everything is so germy. So once I start feeling better, I need to like clean everything, take an everything shower, like reset to, you know, fully feel better. Um, so that's what we're doing today. So as you guys would have saw, I like stripped my bed, started washing all the bedding. Once that's done, I'm going to strip all the couch covers, wash those with the throw pillows all that sort of stuff so that's kind of what the plan is for today and then I've been trying to make um, my own bread which I feel like a lot of people have been doing lately so I've made artisan bread which turns out I think I've perfected it it's pretty delicious and then I've also started making like white bread for sandwiches and that sort of thing 
and Cody's back at work and just likes to take sandwiches for lunch. So instead of buying bread, I've been trying to make it for his sandwiches. So I need to make another loaf, which I thought I would show you guys when I do that today. And the recipe, which I will link down below for you guys, makes two loaves. But I'm finding that when you like equal it out, the slices in terms of like sandwiches are kind of small. So I think what I'm going to do this time is make, is do like a fourth and then like three fourths. So I'm going to make a bigger loaf and then just make maybe like a little roll or a small little loaf um, out of what's left. Just so that like the sandwich slices are a little bit bigger. And yeah, that is kind of the plan today. Um, so welcome back. I'm sorry that I sound like a frog. Um, I have also been, I'm sure you guys have noticed in my videos, which I really try to crop it out, but sometimes I just can't. So my camera picks up like every little sound. Like if I zoom in, zoom out, if I grab the camera, like everything, it just picks up every little sound. So I've been messing with the sound settings. This is actually my second time videoing this because the first time I changed all my sound settings and then recorded this without like testing it first and you could barely hear me. Even when I cranked the sound all the way up on my like editor, it's still like you have to have your volume on full blast and then there was this like shushing noise. I, it was just not great. So I messed with the settings, did a bunch of test shots and hopefully this is better. Um, I am going to order an external microphone, um, just hoping that will help take away some of that like background noise, handling noise as well. But if anybody watching this has the Canon EOS M50 Mark II, I believe, please let me know if you have any tips or solves for the handling noise because it drives me nuts and I like... Like I said, I do my best to edit it out, but sometimes if I'm like in the middle of shooting something and zoom in to show you, all you hear is that like, like zooming in and I just can't stand it. So I'm trying to like be more cautious how I record things so that there's less handling noise. Um, I just wanna let you guys know if you've noticed that. Don't worry, I have two, I'm working on it. Um, hopefully this video is okay and then I need to order the external mic so hopefully that will help as well and it's a work in progress guys I apologize but I'm working on it so I'm going to do a little bit of work keep doing some laundry and then I will show you guys when I make the bread okay so what you're gonna need is warm water flour sugar some salt oil and then active dry yeast, which these are pretty cheap. You can just buy them in like a big um, little like sleeve of them. And that's it. So first, um, you can either do this by hand or I like to use the stand mixer with a dough hook. So the first step is you wanna activate your yeast. So you're gonna add your water. You're gonna add your yeast. And like I said, I'll post the actual recipe down below for you guys. So you'll add your yeast. All right, so you pour that in with the water. You add a pinch of salt. Not salt, a pinch of sugar. You're going to leave that for like 5 to 10 minutes and it should start getting kind of fizzy and bubbly and that's how you know it's working. Um, if it doesn't do that, then you'll have to start over and it could indicate that your yeast is bad or like expired. We'll wait for that to proof and then I'll show you like what it looks like when it is done proofing. Okay, so I don't know if you guys will fully be able to tell in the video. It's like having a hard time focusing, but you can sort of see how there's like bubbly, foamy, little bubbles popping up. That's good, that means that it's proofed. So you just leave that for five to 10 minutes until it starts doing this, and then once it does this, 
we can add the rest of our ingredients. Okay, so now that that is proofed, we are going to add the rest of our sugar. We're going, oh, there we go. We're going to add our salt. We're going to add our oil. And then we're going to add half of, well, three cups of the flour and then mix. So there's two cups. There's three cups. And then we're going to mix that all together. Okay, and then we're gonna add one more cup of flour and then mix it. And while it's mixing, we're gonna add a half a cup of flour at a time until it gets to um, the right consistency. So you want it to be like thick enough that it's pulling away from the outsides of the bowl and a little bit sticky, but not too sticky. Um, so that's where it kind of varies on the amount of flour that you need, just based on the consistency of it. So we're gonna add one more cup of flour. So we can see that it's trying to pull away from the side, but it's still kind of sticking to it. So we're gonna add a half a cup more. Let's see what that does. So I'm going to stop it for a second and just kind of, so now it's all, it's like sticky but kind of thick. So I'm just going to kind of pull it all off of the hook, scrape the sides a little bit. Okay, so now that it's at the consistency we want, it's sticky but it can still come off. And when you turn this on, it'll pull away from the sides. So once it gets to that consistency, we're going to turn it on medium speed and let that knead it for about five minutes. And if you don't have a mixer, then you can just use a floured surface and knead it by hand. Okay, so now that we're done kneading the dough, we're going to pull it off of the hook. It's okay if it's a little sticky, but you definitely don't want it too sticky. So this is what it looks like now. So since we're done with that, we're going to take a bowl, grease it up, and then we're going to pour this into the bowl. to cover it with a towel keep it somewhere semi warm um, I normally just leave it up here in the kitchen and we're going to let it rise for about an hour and a half and it should pretty much double in size so I'm gonna set my alarm for an hour and a half there we go and we will come back once the first proofing is done, and then we'll have a second proofing.
Okay, so now that we've let the dough rise for the second time, it is nice and plump in here. This one is the small one I'm doing just so that this one is bigger for the sandwich bread, like I was saying. So now we're gonna bake in the oven at 350 for 30 minutes. And then when they're done, we just put them on a wire rack and then I take butter and brush the butter on the top of them. And then you just let them sit for a little bit and eat it. So pretty easy, but I will show you once they're done. Okay, I just made myself some carne asada burritos, a carne asada burrito from Trader Joe's for lunch while I wait for the bread to bake and then we need to switch the laundry, start putting the bed back together. Once all the couch covers are done, I'll start putting that back together. And that's about it for the moment. I have a meeting in a little bit, um, like an hour. And then I'm waiting for a package to show up. And it's for Valentine's Day, so Cody cannot see it. So I'm really hoping it shows up before he gets home from work so he doesn't see it and I can show you guys. So that is kind of the plan for the rest of the day. guys these look so good i definitely think this looks bigger than the last time i made it and then this one will just be for like i don't know butter whatever dipping a little side slice of bread and then this will be the loaf for the actual sandwiches so now i'm just gonna put the butter on it and we'll let them sit celebrate Valentine's Day but um, I wanted to do this I've been wanting to do this since we got our wedding photos back I just haven't had a chance so it's kind of like for the both of us but I thought Valentine's Day would be a good excuse to like actually do it and order it so I put together I used mix book and I put together a wedding book of all of our photos you guys Oh my gosh, it's so cute. I'm excited. But I use Mixbook, and the first time you make one, they give you a 50% off code, which is super nice. Um, and it's super user-friendly. Like, you just add all your photos, you pick your design, you pick, like, all the book features, and then it gives you, like, layout options. You can do a blank page and add a ton of photos, and then it'll give you options on like how to lay it out or it has preset options um super easy super convenient um so i just did 
Cody and Kylie with our wedding day. And then on the back, it just says the crooks. But I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, you guys. This is so cute. So it has like getting ready, like little prompts. And then our photos. I love it. I love it. I love it. Super cute. So that is what I got for Valentine's Day this year. I got some cute little red wrapping paper that I just remembered actually I left in the car. So Cody wouldn't see it. I need to go get it and bring it in. Um, so I got this. I'm going to wrap it. And then I just got him some little candies he likes and a card. So for Valentine's Day, I'm just going to like wrap it all together for him. But I wanted to show you guys that. This is not sponsored, but I just thought it was super easy and convenient to make. And I absolutely love it. So I wanted to show you guys before I go hide it so that he doesn't see. <laughs> Right, you guys I have the couch all put back together the bed all put back together I have a load of clothes in the wash right now and then what else did we do got the bread all made and got Cody's Valentine's gift hidden and yeah I think I'm gonna wrap this up here for the day Cody is on his way home from work right now and so I'm just gonna finish my work day, hang out with him for a little bit, take an everything shower tonight, which I'm very excited for. And then I'll be clean, the house will be clean, and we're just gonna, we're gonna get over this stinking virus and be healthy again. So make sure you like and subscribe if you aren't already. And thank you guys so much for watching.